three casts, three clear rejections. I got a couple good drifts. Uh, they're eating dry flies uh, pretty readily. I had a dry fly on that was small, and I was like, well, it's a small dry fly, it'll work. In our last episode featuring Umpqua's Russell Miller, we hopped in the car, headed west, and went looking for trout as autumn kicked off in the Rockies. At spot number one, we could see our breath to start the day, so Russell selected his confidence flies and approached to the water accordingly. Spots two and three of the day would each pose a unique challenge, so stick around to see it unfold in episode two of On the Water Strategy with Umpqua Feather Merchants. Yeah, so I did something I don't normally do. And what I did is I took my rod rigged from spot number one and just put it in the car. And now I took out rod from spot number one and I was like, oh, it's gonna work for here. And I went and I banged my head against the wall trying to make the rod, the setup I put together from spot one work on spot two. It did not work at all. I didn't like the fly. Uh, my leader felt a little bit short for the kind of water we're on here. So, uh, I gotta redo. Three casts, three clear rejections. I got a couple good drifts. Uh, they're eating dry flies uh, pretty readily. If you watch how they're rising uh, and the types of rise forms are creating, I don't believe they're eating adults, which is what I've got on. So we're gonna wanna look uh, at more of a merger style fly uh, and start to put that towards them and see what it does. I'm really gonna exaggerate a dry fly leader with an extended tippet section. Uh, and what that's gonna do is pull, put a lot of slack into my leader. And so I get that good dead drift and that fly's gonna have the movement it really needs to have. So uh, I, I changed up here. My thought here, I threw on again. I, I had a, a small dry fly and they were rising pretty good in here earlier. I'm either gonna be ultra imitative and try to match exactly what they're eating in, in the life cycle and the stage that they're at uh, in the bug, or I'm gonna go totally left field and I'm gonna go terrestrial and try to avoid what they're uh, keying in on and use the, you know, the opportunistic nature of a brown trout to my advantage, right? Oh, food, eat. Um, so uh, I'm gonna start out with Techie and trying to match where they're at. I'm putting on a Mole Midge, one of Charlie Craven's patterns. Uh, it's got a CDC tuft here. I've got my Shimazaki. Um, when I do this, I grab the bend of the hook, the part I want underneath the water, and this tuft the CDC is gonna be the part that stays up. And I'm gonna hit that, and I'm gonna make sure I work it into the CDC just a little bit. And that's gonna dry pretty darn quickly. Up from here, I've gone with a super long piece of uh, level 6X Performex nylon. Uh, and that is to put a lot of extra slack into this. So this fly really has an opportunity to move around really, really well uh, out on the water in some of these complex surface currents that are here. Um, and I've opted to stay with my three weight. Now I might get my butt kicked on a couple fish here, uh, just seeing some of these heads. But the reason I wanna stay with this um, a, I've got the leader I really like on here, which is the Umpqua uh, Finesse Leader. It's a 12-foot leader. It's going to help me turn over these small flies very, very delicately. The other thing to think about, this is pretty flat water uh, that we're fishing. The weight of your fly line is going to hit the water. And if you have a fly line that weighs less than more, it's going to hit the water softer, right? Uh, so I'm gonna try to be as stealthy as I can, use every advantage I can here uh, to try to fool a fish with a pea-sized brain. So that's what I got for you. Well, let's push over to the picnic table, see what's in the bag, reset for the spot. Two, spot two. And this is where we messed up. During that time frame, it took about 10 to 15 minutes to film that episode of what's in the bag. The fish went from eating adults to eating emergers to eating almost nothing at all. There are just not a lot of heads up right now. So please oblige. Take a look at our episode of What's in the Bag. Uh, I'm going to put drop the link up here. Uh, features Russell's bandolier sling because in that time frame uh, of filming that video, we lost our key feeding time. Now they're just not doing anything.
what's kind of your overall strategy for a piece of water that looks like this, glassy and difficult? First, as quiet as you can be. Uh, your approach is almost more important than anything. The only thing more important than your approach is your cast. This is where spending time in the parking lot uh, with an instructor pays off uh, because you get the best shot. Um, I, got, I got like three good shots of the pod that was up here. Uh, I had one bad cast and they stopped rising. Uh, it just landed too heavy. Um, so casting, approach, casting, and then the third piece of advice would be make sure you've got good distance between your fly line and your fly. Having something that's going to be too close, uh, you're going to watch your fly get pulled too easy. So I think spreading out and opening up would be my big three pieces of advice uh, for really flat technical water. Um, and the fourth would be patience, because uh, you're not going to hook every fish you see. But uh, it's fun to try. Alright, so one of the things that's driving me nuts right here, if you look at the end of my fly line, you see it sinking. So, grab it. Get out your, your best friend when it comes to dry fly fishing. Give it a little help. Such a slow eat, I thought I had time to set the hook with how much line I got out, but I set it way too early. down like this with it and just swam downstream with it. What would have been a great dry fly afternoon turned into two hours of us trying to feed, rather force feed, a trout up top. Uh, we ended up fooling a couple smaller fish. We ended up switching over to streamers as the barometric pressure had changed and again caught a couple small fish but uh, wasn't really the day we had planned. Sometimes people need a reminder that we do have a higher thinking capacity than the <laughs> trout do. <laughs> yeah, I need that reminder constantly. We're standing on the banks of Spot 3. Spot 3 is a lesser known river in Colorado. Wink, wink. Now we're going to lean back and kick up our feet and just kind of enjoy the ride and break out the two-hander. Um, Trout Spay on the Grand River uh, is a great way to end the day. Uh, that lower light, it's a great opportunity to kind of swing some flies, whether they be soft tackles or little small streamers or buggers, um, and kind of editing your water so you've got something that has some real nice broad even flow that allows you to get a nice even swing over there and present your flies and manipulate them a little bit and kind of entice a, a strike. I am bringing along a dry fly rod because, I mean, look at that. How do you not want to throw a dry fly into that? So um, again, just kind of letting the river dictate what we're going to do today, but I'm super excited to end our day on just a really mellow, easy going note because it's been a fabulous day. Staying cast for 45 minutes straight and just like look around. Awesome. Uh, thanks for joining along and uh, we'll see you soon again. Umpqua Feather Merchants, check us out at Anglers All. We've got all the flies, leader tippet, packs and bags that you need for a great day on the water, regardless of your chosen method. A couple of grabs later and a couple of fish to hand, we had ended the day as planned, swinging flies and relaxing. Colorado is a state full of water and fly fishing opportunities. If you're looking to try something new or need help planning your next trip, drop us a comment below or stop into the shop to start planning.